Next up, we have Kyle Ingram and Jack Fishman from Patty. And these two presenters uh, are going to talk to us about seeking adventure and saving the oceans. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of intro on them. Kyle was first uh, learned, uh, did scuba diving in 2001 while attending college, and he got his open water. He got open water certified and progressed to becoming a paddy instructor um, prior to graduating. He became hooked, no pun intended, or pun intended, um, on the ocean, and a lifelong career in diving began. Uh, while in North Carolina, uh, he swam with sand tigers, World War II wrecks, and uh, he hunted for megalodon teeth. Man, I wish I had a megalodon tooth. And uh, he worked in Kauai as the general manager of a Patty Five Star Dive Resort and then um, became a uh, retail and resort marketing consultant. And he, after six and a half years in the marketing department, he was chosen to become Patty's regional manager representing the Pacific, which includes Hawaii, Guam, Saipan, Northern Mariana Islands, Marshall Islands, Palau, and the Federated States of Micronesia and Okinawa. So we are super lucky to have Kyle as our Patty, Patty regional director. Um, and then Jack Fishman came from a family of divers and has been diving since the age of eight. That's a little bit earlier than I was diving. When I got certified, I was 13. So um, he's always asked questions and explored ocean environments. And he first saw reef change before his eyes when diving in Bonaire in the Caribbean. Oh. This motivated him to become a PADI instructor at age 18. Jack then worked as the lead conservation coordinator and MSDT instructor at uh, a PADI dive center in the Florida Keys. And during the aftermath of Hurricane Irma in that region, he worked with local dive centers and NOAA and the fishing community to help establish debris removal efforts and reporting, which he's uh, and which he's been working with Project Aware for years. Whew, that's a lot. You guys are pretty amazing. So we're excited both to welcome Kyle and Jack, representing Patty and Project Aware to this year's Ocean Fair Live. And uh, take it away, guys. Seek adventure and save the ocean. <clears throat> Cool. Can you guys see me at the moment? Hello, everyone. Yes, we can <laughs> see you. I, I am going to uh, kind of warm up the crowd as Kyle uh, here just solves a few minute technical difficulties. But if you guys can see me and hear me, um, I've been adding some fun backgrounds. And of course, um, my name is Jack. So I'm not Kyle, uh, to be clear, <laughs> at this moment. But um, it is really a pleasure to be with you guys here, celebrate Jack's Diving Locker and diving happening in Hawaii. And while we are waiting for Kyle to get everything settled, which will happen very shortly, I just wanted to use this opportunity to show off some cool backgrounds that I did see uh, in your local waters uh, with some local whales. I believe they were pilot whales. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys are more than likely the whale experts, but what an amazing opportunity to just see a plethora of marine life uh, in the waters of Hawaii from you know, macro, small eels, uh, all the way to huge wildlife in pods and uh, amazing formations, as you can see here. So it was just a really nice opportunity to kind of revel and have that wow, aha moment, because Hawaii for me was a place where I have had more, oh my gosh, this was a first, this was an amazing opportunity to see an animal you never would have expected in a diving scenario, or even in this circumstance, as you can see from the drone footage of Shifoto here, just as an opportunity in between dives. So to me personally, uh, yes, excellent. So I'm glad you confirmed that those are indeed pilot whales. Um, when it comes to the opportunities of diving in Hawaii, it's a very special place to me because I personally have had a lot of firsts in terms of dream animals that I've wished to encounter and um, from different areas of animals that I would have expected, anything from whales. Um, I think that I actually saw my first manta ray there, which we'll talk more about when it comes to my side of the presentation. But uh, once again, as we uh, wait for Kyle here, we kind of dive into some more fun facts, 
So for anyone listening in, this would be a cool opportunity to have a little Q&A opportunities um, for Project AWARE or any conservation events happening. If there's any questions, I can certainly answer them while we wait for the slide deck to appear. Maybe that might be a fun thing to do. Hey, Jack, you know who we have here in yeah. uh, behind the scenes is yeah. the Jack Diving Locker Director of Education. Super uh, cool. Right? And she hey. would like to talk about this amazing class uh, that we've got going on tomorrow. Um, so here she is. I'm going to let her go sit down. That sounds great. Let's talk about it. Hey, everybody. Hey. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing well. It's good to see you guys. Good to be yeah. here with you. Thanks so much for being here today with us. Of course. Um, so Jack, as you know, we're going to be offering the Project Aware specialty virtually tomorrow. And so maybe um, maybe you could tell people a little bit about that. And uh, Absolutely. That's a great segue. So while we're talking about some of the amazing animals, and uh, you can see here these pilot whales among some of these first, if you guys are diving, if you guys are celebrating Jack's Diving Locker, uh, tomorrow Jack's will be offering a Project Aware specialty course. And once again, I believe that starts at 1 p.m., um, Hawaii time and really to give you guys just a quick introduction which is what my slides would be showing you but the project work course is very special to us because it's a non-diving course so if you are listening in and you might be a diver or you're listening in you're a diver and you have family members who you know are, are kind of interested in what you do but may not quite be a diver yet or they just want to learn about some of the amazing conservation actions that Jack's Diving Locker is doing project aware specialty course is just a great introduction to the world of conservation via, actually, if you want to hold that up, that'd be great, that little post you had. These are our 10 tips. And I know they're a little bit hard to see, but essentially what we did is we took each of these tips all the way, there you go. You can see that what, it's very important to be a buoyancy expert, being a role model, some things that you consider to be very generalized, but others like becoming a debris activist, which is a lot of what we focus on at Project Aware um, with our dedication to removing marine debris and training others. The idea here is that if you're a non-diver or you're a diver kind of looking to bring conservation into your training, this Project Aware Specialty course is going to show you exactly about the most important things that we as divers do to protect our ocean environment. And these 10 tips are just a sample of some of the kind of guidelines, if you will, of the important parts of conservation, like we were saying, from good buoyancy tactics to learning how to remove marine debris and being a role model for others. And for all of those listening in who are divers, of course, as we'd imagine, we're the ones who get to see these amazing animals and that we want to share these experiences with others. So the Project Aware Specialty will be a cool opportunity to learn about local efforts, learn exactly how you can enter the underwater world or support the underwater world as a non-diver. Um, all of the above can participate. And I just think you're going to learn some really cool uh, facts, and really cool stories about what Jack's Diving Locker is do. Just as Kyle has appeared in his amazing shirt and this beautiful background, you guys want to learn more about these kind of environments and this Project Aware Specialty do exactly what will be a good opportunity for you. Thanks, Jack. And just to let everybody know, if you want to sign up for that, um, you can just give us a call at um, Jack's Diving Locker or put something in the chat and we can reach out to you. Um, we are inviting people to just come and be part of the conversation. So if you um, then want to get um, the official certification, then you just pay um, for the cost of the pick. But if you want to just come and join and be part of the conversation to learn some things, you're welcome to do that for free. So give us a call or put something in the chat if you'd like some more information on that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we'll keep on talking about some cool stories for you guys. All right. So I'm sorry I uh, hopped in a little late here. But, of course, as things go, uh, you know, Internet falls out right, right at the clutch time. So we got that <laughs> taken care of and, and back in business here. But, um, Jack, just to catch me up to speed, uh, it sounds like you were going over some of the, the Project Aware offerings. Yeah, we were just doing an introduction. I was showing some cool backgrounds of, of animals I've seen in Hawaii, just casually chatting about some cool diving experiences, and of course tomorrow. But other than that, we're going to our presentation. So perfect segue back to you. Perfect. Well, let's go ahead and, and get that uh, get that going here for you. So excellent. Um, you know, I didn't really have the time to introduce myself, but my name's Kyle Ingram. I'm the regional manager for uh, Patty Americas, uh, the scuba diving training agency covering Hawaii and uh, a large portion of the Pacific Ocean, including places like Guam, Saipan, Okinawa, uh, Marshall Islands, Micronesia, Palau, places like that, all, all throughout the Pacific Ocean. And, uh, you know, we're really honored to be here, uh, Jack and myself today. It's really amazing that we get to connect with so many divers worldwide and, and present in tandem, really, with 
people like Sean Henricks earlier, uh, Hall of Famer Marty Snyderman, Kurt Keller, Kiyoki, and Kathleen. The list goes on. It's, it's truly amazing. But what Jack and I really want to do today is inspire you to seek adventure and save the ocean. So let's take a quick look at, uh, at what we'll cover here. You know, first and foremost, I want to talk about the current status of scuba diving worldwide and uh, some of the measures Patty has taken to provide you the most up-to-date information possible. We want to talk about how supportive the global community of Patty divers is worldwide and how you can become a Patty torchbearer, which we'll cover here in just a few minutes. Of course, with things like um, the COVID and the pandemic, you know, diver etiquette has evolved a little bit. So we, I'm going to cover uh, just a couple tips there for you how to make the ocean your office, and then of course, how to stay engaged if you are still stuck at home. Once we conclude that, Jack will take it over and, and fill in with some of the more, um, some more specifics on Project Aware. Uh, but we got, a, we got a lot of great content here for you today. So first, let's talk about the status of scuba diving worldwide. Well, Patty, uh, a couple of weeks ago, reached out to all of the Patty Dive Centers and Resorts um, worldwide to see you know, what, what is the status of their businesses? Are they able to open uh, fully? Are they open with some restrictions? Maybe it's travel related, maybe it's, uh, you know, things like social distancing, or, um, you know, are they closed completely at this time? You know, it's really hard to ga gather that information considering there's dive centers and resorts in so many different places. So we, as, as such a large organization, have, have taken it upon ourselves to try and collect this data and make it available to, the, to uh, divers like yourselves. You know, so you can check and see not only if somewhere, you know, far away from your hometown is open, but maybe even areas close to you that are, that are more of your local dive sites. Um, it's hard to keep on top of that unless you've got an open line of communication with your dive center, which you should have, but um, this is a great map to check that out at. So I put the URL there on the screen. Um, but it's actually really easy to Google. Just Google Patty Scuba Diving COVID map. It'll be the first return. And this gives you the most up-to-date information on virtually any destination you can find worldwide. Um, we've used tactics like this in the past, kind of like when Hurricane Irma went through uh, the Southeast of the US and the Bahamas and Caribbean area. And uh, it really helped to you know, bring people's awareness to what occurred and uh, how they, what they could do to help support and, and interact with those dive businesses that they love. Um, but you know, speaking about the big network of divers that we do have, I do wanna cover a couple of things with you. It's, it's really interesting, a lot of people don't realize that Patty partners with over 6,770 dive centers and resorts worldwide. And that was the number that we took at the end of 2019. So uh, it's actually increased since then, um, surprisingly, even despite uh, COVID being a thing. Um, but with that, those 6,770 dive centers are located in 186 countries and territories. And I always like to, when I used to do um, trade shows for marketing and uh, for patty marketing and things like that, I used to always say, you can travel virtually anywhere on the planet and dive with a patty dive center as long as it's not an active war zone. But uh, 186 countries and territories is the vast majority of the planet, right? In those countries and territories, there's, there's over 137,000 PADI professionals ready to take you diving, ready to teach you diving, even teach you other skills like free diving, public safety diving, tech diving, rebreathers, whatever you're into, uh, we, got it, we got it covered. So just know that there's a huge network of out there. And as of last year, um, and you might wanna remember this, but as of last year, we have certified, or PADI professionals, uh, have certified over 29 million divers, uh, which is pretty significant. We've been around since uh, 1966, and 29 million is, is an outrageous number, um, but still only a fraction of the world's population. You know, in an average year, uh, well, last year, for instance, we taught, uh, PADI professionals taught over a million divers, and that was the third year in a row that that has occurred. So uh, you can see that the STEAM is building, and I think a lot of that has to do with the beautiful imagery that people put on social media, um, the interactions and word of mouth in the local communities, and just how engaging and fun the sport is. Um, and the fact that it always aids to conservation efforts for the ocean, which really is the lifeblood of the earth, right? So while it's, it's very impressive with the stats and everything that Patty's put out there, uh, what's more impressive is what's, what Jack's Diving Locker has done in their time. And I just want to cover this briefly, too. 
you know, Jack's Diving Locker has been around since 1981. In 1983, they applied to become a Patty Dive Resort, which, which brought them into that family. And in 1996, they actually applied to be a Patty Five Star Instructor Development Center. And, and since that time, well, if you're un unaware of what that means, a Patty Five Star IDC Center is a dive, dive center resort that can train Patty professionals through the ranks. So not only just dive masters and, and open water scuba instructors, but all the way up through uh, master scuba diver trainers, master instructors, IDC staff instructors, uh, all the way through. So it's, uh, it's really, you know, it's, it's amazing and impressive that they've been doing this for so long. But prior to this presentation, I wanted to see, you know, just from Patty's point of view, what, what kind of impact have they had on the community, not just in Hawaii, but worldwide? And what I found out was, you know, Jack's Diving Locker, at least on record, I'm sure it's far, far, far more than this, has introduced paddy diving to over 35,474 people. And that's crazy, right? It's like a small village or a, a small town. They've certified over 18,822 paddy divers. So all sorts of certifications from entry level to specialties to even more niche uh, courses that, that are offered. And in all of that time, they've trained over 531 PADI professionals. So really simply put, you know, if you train and fun dive with Jack's Diving Locker, you really are in the best of hands. So as we covered some of that, let's take a look at what you as, as a diver yourself or as someone who's interested in becoming a diver can do to protect the sport and, and simply just protect what we love. Now, you know, once upon a time, the decline in our ocean's health, which has been covered greatly throughout uh, the whole day of presentations, great presentations from um, Marty and, and everyone else prior. Uh, but really the ocean health was, was only noticed by a few, right? And today, especially with, so, with social media, it's a common topic and pretty much every mainstream media source you can find. The alarming thing is that, you know, everyday trash is entering our ocean and, and with more you know, they're, they're predicting that 250 million tons of plastic are estimated to make it uh, into our oceans by 2025. And that's only, you know, less than five years away. So we have to commit ourselves to protecting the environment, protecting our office, you know, which like much, much of the pros here and Jack's Diving Locker, Patty and worldwide, you know, the ocean really is our office or those fresh water uh, bodies of water are the office that we work in uh, most regularly. So we want to protect it. We want to clean it up, right? And so this is why Patty's uh, creating a new mission and vision moving forward. And as we kick off this new decade, we wanna do something with a lot of purpose, right? Our vision is really to inspire and achieve a balance between humanity and our ocean. And really that's in order for us to survive and thrive together for not just our generation or our children's generation, but many, many, many generations to come. So how are we gonna do that, right? There's seven point some odd billion people on the planet. How are we going to make an impact in all of their minds and hearts and, and get them to really step up and, and do what's needed for the planet and, uh, and the oceans, right? Well, Patty is creating a new, uh, a new program that really it's, it's a mission. And the mission is to unite a billion humans to explore and protect our oceans. And that doesn't necessarily mean a billion people certified to scuba dive, but what it means is a billion people focused on protecting where we scuba dive, right? And so, you know, while these challenging times are on many levels, you know, alarming, Jack's Diving Locker and this ocean fair in specific serves really as an important reminder to connect with and pr prioritize the role that the ocean plays in all of our lives. You know, ocean health determines the quality of, of life on earth, and really the importance of mobilizing and uniting the world's population, you know, that seven point some odd billion people um, into sustainable management of our, of our world's resources, it just can't be ignored, right? So Patty's building the momentum to restore balance between humanity and, and the ocean and further create a billion torchbearers. And, and you can get involved in that. And I wanna go over a couple ways how you can do that. Not just at home or, or when you travel, um, but you can take a stand. And, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. You know, intellectually, most people know that the oceans are important to, you know, important and endangered, but because we're divers or because you're inspired by the art of diving and the sport of diving, we really have that heart knowledge and not just that head knowledge, right? 
we immerse in the sea and, and it embraces us. We see it, we feel it and connect with it really like no other group can. So when the ocean hurts, you know, I hurt, we hurt as a group. And when it heals, we feel that healing. We see that healing when we're underwater. So more vital than a, you know, more than a vital biosphere, the ocean itself, all life depends on it. Life on land and life underwater. So for us, you know, the seas are an art, an adventure, companionship and solace. And as I think Jacques Cousteau once said, the sea, once it casts its spell, holds you in its net forever. I think I, I may have left a few words out of there, but, but it's really an inspiring quote, quote. And one, it's, it's, it's not a small point. You know, less than half percent of the people on earth are divers. So as a paddy diver and, and as you as a paddy diver, you can become a torchbearer, you can become an influencer and really make your voice, voice heard, right? You know, COVID is going to leave us behind here soon. And we, and we just want to make sure that all the repairing and, and healthy actions that the earth is, has provided itself while we're all stuck at home, um, maintain and actually get better over time because we really understand the value of, of what that is. And all of you guys are invited and encouraged to join the community, the conservation community of Patty, to become a torchbearer, to make your voice heard. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. You know, first off, um, it really starts at home, right? You need to make a number there's a number of things you can do, uh, the beneficial choices and uh, habits that you can start enacting that are far better for the health of the ocean. Like first off, eliminating toxic chemicals in your home. You know, if you, if you probably asked your grandmother um, or even your mother in some cases, before the supermarket shelves had all of the uh, cleaning products on them, uh, families were using simple products at home to, to clean things up every day and those things are far less toxic to our, our bodies of water and our oceans themselves. So things like vinegar, baking soda, and lemon juice. Simple products, it saves you money, it's better for the environment, and, uh, and it can be used for, for a number of reasons. I, I challenge you to Google it, you'll be surprised at, at what you can do with just vinegar, baking soda, and lemon juice. You know, choosing sustainable seafood is, is another one and by no means, uh, by all means, I love seafood. I eat it all the time. But you need to be, uh, you need to make sustainable choices as to the seafood that you do actually eat. So it can really be as simple as just looking what's on your dinner plate, right? Or in your shopping bag, for that matter. You wouldn't think of buying something, you know, made of ivory or or coral, because um, we all understand that, that that it's improper to take those and then, and then use those, right? So use that same mindset the next time you order seafood. You know, fish are, are an essential, essential part of our planet's ecosystem, but 90% of the world's fish stocks are used up, right? Overfishing isn't the only threat. Some farm-raised seafood is also a problem because um, with the way that they're, uh, they're grown out there, it kind of pollutes the, the local surrounding areas. Um, in some cases, mangroves, depending on where you live. Um, but if you're a seafood lover, really don't stress. There's actually one easy thing that you can all do right now while you're listening to me. Just go on your smartphone and download the Seafood Watch app. And that'll actually tell you, uh, give you a lot of details on which seafood is sustainable, which ones aren't. And uh, so, it's, so it's really easy to do. So Seafood Watch app, you can get it on iPhones, uh, Android. Uh, I'm sure you can access it on desktop if you needed to as well. Um, so check that out. But there's also people that make uh, downloadable guides specific to your area. So depending on where you live, maybe go on your Google search, type in um, seafood guides and wherever you live. Um, I'm sure somebody's blogged about it, talked about it. Uh, but, but if not, the Seafood Watch app will definitely help you. Now, of course, uh, you've heard this a lot lately and a lot of states have taken it upon themselves. But uh, just as an individual and at your home, say no to those single use plastics, right? Um, it's, you know, I was looking up a couple stats on, on single use plastics. And one of the interesting things I found was that just a simple plastic water bottle, disposable plastic water bottle lasts 450 years. And those cheap plastic grocery bags that they've started banning all over the place, they banned them in Southern California up until, um, COVID hit, right? And now they're using it for sanitation reasons. But those last 20 years and they're so thin, you can see through them, right? Just the plastic forks, knives and spoons that you use, those last over 100 years and plastic straws, 200 years, even cigarette filters last 20 or 10, 10 20 years, something like that. It's, uh, it's alarming. So do what you can to find 
alternatives to those single use plastics um, and, and take it upon yourself to limit your usage of that. Now here's a funny one a lot of people don't recognize, but you can be an eco-friendly pet owner. And that doesn't necessarily mean just picking up uh, your dog's number two when you take them out to the park, but really it has a lot to do with their food um, and, and some of the other packaging requirements of some of the products they use. So when you read pet food labels, consider, consider what the environmental impact will be. Um, anything that's usually beef related or beef heavy is gonna have a much higher um, carbon footprint. So if you choose other things, uh, other forms of, of meat for your dogs, such as uh, chicken, things like that, not quite as much of a carbon footprint. Um, pork is another one as well. And then there are sustainable seafood alternatives uh, that you can find uh, as well. Choose, uh, if you have the choice, choose pet food that comes in recycled, uh, recycled packaging. I actually saw some at Costco recently. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, another interesting one is don't ever flush cat litter down the toilet because there the cow litter has path, pathogens in it that are um, that can make sea life ill in the local environment and of course if you have an aquarium at home whether you have it for your kids or yourself or maybe it's in your office um, focus on using fish that are not uh, wild caught right because it just helps keep those uh, populations thriving in in and underwater finally you know choose an, an ocean first alternative product um, you know, you've seen some of these new products come out here from the ocean cleanups. They're, they're making sunglasses and flip-flops. Uh, you'll actually notice that there are a bunch of companies coming out of Indonesia because there is such a large um, waterborne rubbish issue out there. A lot of people are collecting that and making products and reselling them out there out of that recycled material. So if you have the chance and you're, you're in the market for something new that you think you might could find an alternative for, um, start looking for the, the ocean first alternatives before you go after, you know, your, your everyday uh, generic, generic option, right? Uh, bamboo utensils are a good option, metal straws, and of course, things like organic uh, reef safe sunscreen is a big one as well, especially if you live near the coast. So while you can do a number of things at home, uh, there's a lot more you can do, right? To ignite that passion in others, to get them to start protecting the oceans, um, and what we call our office, you know, be, be a local beach and ocean steward. If you're, if you're at the beach and you see somebody leave behind some trash, you know, do your good deed and, and pick that up, but also make sure to clean up yourself. This is common practice uh, in backpackers as well, right? So not only those underwater, but those above water who might enjoy hiking and the leave no trace concept. Um, this is really that same type of, type of concept, just doing it underwater because there are far less people going there um, than maybe into the mountains. Following boat practices that don't harm the reefs or coastal habitats, you heard earlier from uh, Terry and Jeff about the Malamakai Foundation that uh, they help with in putting the mooring buoys underwater in Hawaii so that people don't throw anchor and destroy reef. That's, that's one of the significant factors of um, reef degradation in, in certain communities. And Jeff and Terry have done a lot to protect not just uh, their, their environment there on the big island, but, but throughout all of the islands. You know, if you have the chance, volunteer for beach cleanups or dive against debris, um, which Jack will cover here shortly. And of course, don't interact with, um, interfere with the wildlife, right? Even if you're in tide pools, remember, even the things living in those tide pools are alive. The more you touch and play with them, the more likely you are to harm them or uh, displace them. So, so really just focus on that. You know, we, we covered already the disposable lifestyle, but once you ingrain that in yourself, it kind of becomes second nature and it's really not as expensive as people tend to think, um, especially over the past few years, the pricing is, price on those alternative products has really gone down dramatically. Um, and in a lot of cases for your smaller uh, shops that might be selling through Instagram or something like that, they always typically back those projects up with some type of charitable donation to some um, ocean uh, defense resource or something of that nature. So. So, you know, definitely put a focus on it. You know, being a voice for the ocean, uh, sorry there. Um, so being a voice for the ocean is another great one. If you have the time and you're active on social media, use the hashtag save the ocean. It's one that Patty's been using a lot lately, uh, especially with World's, Oceans Day, uh, World's Ocean Day that went over uh, a few days back. Um, but if you're out there and, and you're doing something and you know, you're, you're doing a, a beach cleanup or you just happen to see trash, snap a picture of it, hashtag save the ocean and get that message out there so that people worldwide can, 
can take your actions and be inspired by them. Of course, uh, something that, you know, I'll admit, I'll admit I'm a millennial, but one thing that millennials have really brought to the forefront is choosing experiences over things um, where we really don't rely on the materialistic side of consumer, uh, the consumer world, but really going out there and, and doing something, whether it's uh, scuba diving in your local community or, or traveling and diving elsewhere. Um, choosing experiences over things just, just in general reduces the total consumer footprint of the planet and really allows for a little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, health and rebuild to, to enact itself. Um, the less we buy, the less they can produce. So um, the more you do, the more fun you'll have and really see what the, what the world has to bring you. And of course, finally, supporting organizations committed to ocean protection like Project Aware uh, that Jack will talk about here shortly. Um, being in the PADI network is as well. And then of course, there's so many, many other um, organizations that do a lot of good like um, the Ocean, the Coral Re Restoration Foundation, Lonely Whale, um, it goes on and on, but there, there are plenty out there. So we've covered a couple ideas and you'll keep seeing at the bottom of your page there, a link that says patty.com slash conservation. If these actions and methods are really speaking to you, I, I challenge you to go to that URL, patty.com slash conservation. And on that page, you can sign up to be a torchbearer. Um, but finally, you know, we've talked about what you can do at home, what you can do to inspire others, but you also need to focus on yourself, right? You need to make those memories, leave those bubbles, and, and really just focus on being that eco-conscious diver that you wish everyone was, right? So one of the things you can do, become a citizen science, scientist, right? Uh, Project Aware has an app that allows you to log marine debris that you, that you remove from the oceans. Download that and, and track it so that we, so that Project Aware and Patty can use it to help uh, create measures to protect that body of water, but you can also track much like a diver logbook, what you've done in this certain area over time and how it's actually rebuilding and becoming uh, more healthy over time. You know, look, don't touch is a concept that you learn from the very basic uh, courses in Patty, discover scuba diving, open water. Um, look, but don't touch, right? When you're underwater, that's their natural habitat and, and it's really interesting to watch them there, but interacting with them can cause all sorts of negative consequences not just for the environment, but also for the marine life itself. So um, take that pledge to, to look and don't touch and, and better yet, become a, a photographer, much like Marty Snyderman and uh, go into there and take pictures of it so you can brag about it as opposed to bragging about how you interacted with it, brag about what you saw. I mean, those, those photos that, that Marty had earlier with them uh, mating and with, with the eggs and everything, it was just unbelievable. The, the white shark photo that, that made him famous. Um, that, that was really great stuff. So in pledging to scuba dive responsibly, you know, this kind of goes back to that whole leave no trace concept and, and even the, the project to wear 10 tips uh, for divers to protect the ocean planet that, um, that Jack was showing earlier. Those are just great rundown lists of what you can do to make a difference. And, and that content's actually downloadable on projectaware.org. So I'll let, I'll let Jack speak to that more, but but know that there are guides out there that can help help you through this process. Of course, of course, volunteering and giving back um, is always a great way to pay it forward. And then of, co of course, invite others to carry the torch with you, right? So if you go on and you pledge your commitment to be a Patty torch, uh, torch bearer, protect the ocean to focus on it, inspire your family to do the same, right? So that everybody's thinking about it and making that big difference. And, and while I've talked a lot about, you know, being a torchbearer, I do want to share with you briefly a quick video that Patty launched uh, recently that'll, that'll kind of give you an understanding of what being a torchbearer is all about. So without further ado, let me launch this video for you. And you may want to check your volumes. Give me just one second here. All right.
Spark change for the ocean. Be a torchbearer. All right, so I may have made a mistake there and not played the audio, but I'll tell you what, I'll make the commitment that right after this is done, I will post that video on social media and tag Jack's Diving Locker. So as long as you are uh, following Jack's, you'll be able to watch that video here in just a few minutes. Um, but moving forward, you know, we, we talked about becoming that torchbearer, so, so definitely go out to the, the URL there. But we really want to talk about what diving is going to look like, you know, now during COVID and after COVID. So let's talk about some etiquette, right? Um, first and foremost, it's you need to make sure that you are considerate and honest when going diving with a local dive center, uh, much like Jack's, right? And while I'm not a scientist, I think the good news is that you're probably not going to catch COVID underwater, um, but above water is what we're most concerned with, right? At least generally speaking. So nevertheless, it, it, it makes sense to take precautions when you're off diving um, and, and COVID really is spread kind of like a common cold or flu and that it can, you know, it can be caught by somebody sneezing, coughing, or uh, exist on some surfaces for a period of time. So this is a simple set of rules just to take with you as you begin to dive again um, and, and be begin to dive off of Jack's boats or, or offshore with them. Um, but really, you know, the, the dive centers have, are putting together, you know, procedures to make sure and keep you safe. So follow those procedures when you're going to the dive center. Um, you know, tell staff, of course, ahead of time, if you've contacted COVID in the past, if you've been in contact with anybody that was COVID positive, or, or you're currently, uh, you know, feeling flu-like symptoms, right? Um, wearing a mask or a neck gaiter, a lot of people are familiar if you're, if you're into fishing or, or scuba diving with the, the um, you know, the, well, they're called neck gaiters, right? So <laughs> I guess it's hard to explain. I guess I don't have one laying around here, but the gentleman in the picture right there is wearing one. Fits around your neck, helps protect you from the sun. You can cover up your face with it. Um, really easy to wear, usually pretty thin, and a lot of them have, uh, have uh, sun blocking technologies in them as well. And, and Patty's actually, not to rep uh, Patty Gear, but Patty Gear just released some as well that have removable, um, uh, what are they, you know, removable, filters in them as well as being made from uh, recycled ocean plastic. So um, definitely some great options there. Of course, wear that when, when you're on the boats and follow their distancing procedures uh, while you're not only above land or on the boat uh, or while you are above land, um, whether that's at the shop or, or on the boat or at the dock. Um, keep your, keeping your distance after diving is, is good practice, right? bringing your own type of sanitizer or disinfecting wipes so that you can wipe things down after you're done using them. And of course, one of the most important parts is to, is to disinfect your personal gear, not only after you go diving, but before you go diving, right? And there's a number of ways to do that. Um, Dan, Divers Alert Network has come out with a list uh, as well as the WHO and, or the World Health Organization and the CDC. Um, so look those up, couple options, talk about bleach or steramine or, uh, or there's a few other options out there that are compatible with dive gear. Um, if you do have gear that, that you're wondering on what the best method is, maybe reach out to the manufacturer of that gear as well and see what their recommendations are. And of course, the most important thing, if, if, if you have any concerns or questions before diving um, or before doing something while on a dive, you know, ask your instructor. They're, that's what they're there for. The captains, the boat crews, the instructors, whether you're from shore or, or out in open water, um, they're there, they know, they've discussed it and had meetings on it, so ask them first before, before acting. Um, you know, I wanna go into some other new ideas that, you know, that have kind of surfaced after this time that you, you might not have thought of right off the bat. And the first is, you know, we've all, we're all familiar with, with mass defog and, and there's always those people in the group that use spit, right, instead of, uh, instead of some type of mass defog, but it's more important than ever now uh, to really, rely on that mass defog because you know you get a you get a boat full of people and everybody's spinning their masks and dunking it into the same dunk tank uh you know it might might cause a few issues there so 
certainly a good idea moving forward now is to get yourself one of those trusty bottles of mass defog. Don't forget those things last forever. I'm pretty sure I've got a bottle in my, in my dive gear locker that I've had for four or five years, right? Um, another big one right now is, is really why continue to rely on, on rental gear, right? It's time for you really to purchase gear that you trust, kind of invest in your health. Know that you're not just investing in the sport, but you're investing in your own well-being um, in owning gear, especially things like wetsuits, regulators, uh, BCDs, stuff like that. It protects you underwater. It can help uh, mitigate your disease transmission risk. It's, all in all, it's a great idea. The one thing that a lot of people as well haven't considered is, is having the right safety equipment, right? So uh, you, should per you should probably go out and purchase your own uh, CPR rescue mask, mask with a valve. You know, for the unfortunate time that you might be next to an incident where you need to react and you're, and you're properly trained, you can use that mask and in, in the safest manner possible, um, revive that individual if that's what it comes down, down to. So keep in mind to look for a CPR rescue mask with the valve. Um, inspire your friends and family to become your dive buddy. That way you don't uh, get paired up with somebody while on the boat, but rather um, you know, you're paired up with your family and friends, people that you interact with on a regular basis and, and might bring you a little more comfort when going out on your first dive. Of course, asking permission to board the vessel, you know, Jack's crew and crews worldwide are, are working really hard to uh, sanitize their facilities and that includes the boats, right? So before you step foot on a boat, if you're meeting them at a harbor or something, make sure and ask the captain or somebody on board first if it's ready, uh, ready for you to get there. Finally, uh, you know, Dan Dive Insurance is another big one. Um, that goes without saying for anybody who recreational scuba dives, but you know, now's a great time. Uh, you know, now's better than never, right? So get yourself dive accident insurance in case something goes wrong. And of course, if you're feeling sick on the charter, um, follow the procedures that they outline in the, in the briefings on the boat so that, you know, there might be an area on that boat that uh, you should go to in case you're feeling unwell and uh, just follow those procedures so everybody stays on top. You know, the pro tip going back to the gear ownership, this really is a big thing. You know, it, it's, it doesn't only protect you or, or you know, mitigate trans, transmission, but it supports the dive centers and resorts that, uh, that have been closed down for a long time. So I know we're at Ocean Fair here now. Um, I'm sure there's great promotions in person and I know they're, they're doing uh, promotions online, but if you haven't had the chance, check out Jack's Diving Locker shop and use that promo code at the bottom there to get, uh, I believe it's 20% off of uh, some of the items in, in that shopping cart so, or in that shopping uh, interface. So check that out. But let's talk about some of the gear that you should own, right? Mass fin snorkel, that's, that's some of the first gear you start with. So if you're not certified yet, I definitely recommend looking into those as your first steps. But of course, uh, well, actually a couple of years ago, we did a survey of divers worldwide and asked them what the first piece of gear after mass fins and snorkel was that they purchased. And as a pro, I, I considered computer to be the right answer. But once we uh, got all the, all the uh, survey results, it found, we found out that actually wetsuits were the first thing that most students purchased immediately after buying mass fins and snorkel. So maybe they don't like uh, getting into rental wetsuits uh, but, you know, exposure protection is a great thing to have as, as well as a gear bag to help carry that. You're really your first line of defense here is, is focusing on your uh, underwater uh, life support equipment. So regulators, computers, BCDs, that regulator is number one, right? Because that's what you have in your mouth all the time, uh, as well as the snorkel, depending on, on where you're at in the water column. Um, so focus on picking up those pieces of gear to really round out that package as well as some of the safety equipment we mentioned earlier, like the CPR masks, save a dive kit has saved my life or my dive a million times. I can't even count. Um, and of course the DSMB, right? So uh, uh, AKA a signal sausage, something that can help protect you if maybe you get stuck in a current off of a shore dive or, or you surface away from the boat on a boat dive. Um, something that can help bring awareness to where you are in the water and just provide a little bit more safety and comfort for you as you, as you move on. And then of course, specialty accessories like dive knives in case of an entanglement or uh, removing marine debris from the bottom of the ocean, flashlights for those night dives, uh, compasses for navigating. I think that was one, one piece of equipment that I've used more than anything as a compass. And then line reels and finger spools for those uh, signal sausages we talked about earlier, the DSMBs. Um, so you can actually activate those underwater much like you would on a drift dive. 
So before we uh, send it over to Jack, I do want to talk about, you know, interestingly, every time that, uh, well, Patty tends to see a significant uptick in professional level training when natural disasters occur, or things like this pandemic, and COVID is really no different. We actually did our first instructor exam a couple weeks ago in Texas and had 19 individuals in there who got, uh, who got certified as Patty Open Water Scuba instructors. Um, we're conducting two more this weekend. So um, pretty interesting there. People are really refocusing their passions on, on their professions and scuba diving is one of the ways you can take advantage of that. So how would you go about doing that, right? Well, go to Jack's, uh, become a dive master with them, learn the ways of the industry and, and how to conduct not just leading dives, but helping train divers in, in conjunction with instructors. You know, once you're a dive master, you can actually become a DSD leader and take people on dives and, and teach them the basics through the Discover Scuba Diving program and ultimately, you know, lead that adventure for them and, and create that passion that you have. And then, of course, in taking the instructor development course and passing the instruct, instructor exam are the final steps uh, into becoming a scuba instructor. So if you have that passion to change your career right now and you want to look for something that's new and interesting and can take you to 186 countries and territories and new diving environments worldwide, definitely look into becoming a Patty Pro and definitely doing it with Jax because they've already taught 531 people who are uh, out there active as well, right? So really the benefits of being a Patty Pro, it, it unleashes that leader inside you. Maybe you were on a sports team back in the day and, and you felt how that leadership really inspired you to do more and do better. Um, scuba diving and being, being a scuba diving instructor does that same thing. Uh, we all feel it, we all get to teach the courses. We love uh, being in that role and making sure people are as safe as possible when, when under our guidance. Um, and, it, and it's very meaningful and rewarding for us. You get to explore the new underwater worlds and then of course make new friends, right? And even marine life, kind of like uh, that Hawaiian dragon moray you see there on the, on the screen. I got to dive with this fellow about three or four times a week for about a five year period of time. He was always in the same hole. He's my favorite underwater critter and I named him Unagi, even though that means freshwater eel in, in Japanese sushi terms. I like the name, so there you go. Mr. Unagi for you. But, you know, we talk about being a patty pro and what, what you can do in others. Just know that it, it is worth it, right? And I was hesitant to share this, but there's a picture of me in 2008 at uh, Jules Undersea Lodge in Florida, immediately after passing the instructor exam. Obviously, a lot less hair then, um, but a very, very fond memory. And surprisingly, this was the whole group in that IDC course, right? And out of this entire group of people, every single one of us are still active dive professionals. Uh, I'm the only one who went to Hawaii uh, after becoming an instructor, but there's two, for, two working in the Bahamas right now, uh, one in the Mediterranean, um, one in the Caribbean, two in the Florida Keys, and two in North Carolina, and then uh, the young lady on there now works on a yacht, uh, being a private dive master to whoever rents out that yacht and travels all over, um, all over the place. It's, it's fascinating. Um, but there's a lot that it can do for you. You know, and if you watched, we talked earlier about the Malama Kai Foundation and the moorings, and then Marty Snyderman had his presentation, and, and he might not remember this, but that image right there is of, of me uh, actually drilling one of those mooring holes uh, in the rock. This is actually in Kauai, and Marty Snyderman took that photo. Now, I was quite a bit younger. I took it upon myself to make some edits to it, so it looks a little crazy. Um, and don't fear, I am standing on rock, not reef. Uh, so we aren't actively destroying anything there. But this was us actually installing those uh, mooring pins for that for the Malamakai Foundation in partnership with Terry and, and uh, Terry, Jack's Diving Locker, HRSA, the Hawaii Island Recreational Scuba Association, all, the, all those played an integral part in that. I got to participate in that. And there's virtually no way I would have ever been able to do that if it wasn't first for becoming a patty professional. Um, so what can you do to stay engaged? You know, I hope a lot of these ideas inspire you and give you some resources on what to do when getting back into diving. But I just wanted to place here for a few, uh, few seconds, some of the social media channels, websites and blogs that you can access, uh, not just for Jack's diving locker, but also um, Patty and Project Aware. And I guess with that being said, this is a good segue for me to uh, throw it over to Jack so that he can cover a little bit on Project Aware. So let, Very let, cool. <laughs> let me get Excellent. you some 
keyboard. So Kyle will be much easier, I think, with the flow for just to give you some cues and we'll truck on through this guy. Sounds and, good. Uh, have you just in the background, but um, thank you so much. And Kyle has done an excellent job um, sharing his passion for the diving community, sharing his passion for his life in Hawaii, which I think it's really nice to be able to <laughs> share that back with the members now. So all of you guys tuning in, maybe you guys will get to see Kyle out and about when you guys are diving with Jax or any other amazing dive centers there in Hawaii. But a uh, formal introduction for myself, for those who may have seen me at the beginning, uh, I'm the community conservation officer at Project Aware. So my role is a little bit like Kyle's. I help dive centers um, in Hawaii and many other places across the globe as well. Um, as you'll soon see, Project Aware is a much smaller organization, but we partner in large ways with Patty all the time. So um, my role, again, is to help dive centers build their conservation programs and help instructors and recreational divers and whomever might be listening in today um, just really gain the confidence in that. So perfect segue here. Uh, when it comes to Project Aware, it's really nice for you guys to be able to see a little bit better of who we are. And I think that's never better said than our amazing community of divers and conservation leaders is over 1 million strong. So much like the PADI organization, uh, it's really important to note that we are actually a full-on charity organization, a 501c3 nonprofit for all you tax-sensitive folks. And Project Aware's main mission is to return to a clean and healthy ocean. And the big difference here is that we are actually supporting those efforts um, for all the conservationists, for all the PADI members who might be enthusiastic about conservation with a staff of 14 to 15, depending on how things are going in the world. Um, you'll see some numbers here because our main mission is to help divers get the tools they need to teach conservation, integrate them in their courses, help train the removal and actions of, of marine debris efforts, and um, returning to a healthy ocean with sharks and rays. So one thing I like to mention before we go to the next slide here is just uh, a little bit of a visual for kind of how the funding goes for Project Aware. And a lot of it really comes from the dive community, the passionate ones themselves. More than half of our entire revenue is actually generated by those excited about doing fundraisers, including donations in their certification cards and more. So we are ever thankful uh, for all the support of conservationists, for amazing supporters like Jack's Diving Locker, who is actually um, a 100% aware partner and an active conservation partner as well when it comes to Adopt a Dive Site, which we'll talk about. So it's just amazing to be able to have this opportunity to share some of our passion back with you guys, the divers. And that'll be a perfect segue into the next slide. Cool. So just to give you guys an idea of what exactly we're doing in the background when we're not out there supporting divers like yourselves. Recently, we've taken all of the scientific data when you guys are submitting the Dive Against Debris information, as Kyle really eloquently introduced during his segment, you'll find that that marine debris data really helps us build a better picture of where the hot spots of conservation need to be in terms of marine debris issues. We know that there's issues happening all across the globe in terms of marine debris. It's something that pretty much all of us here can relate to. And I'm sure when it comes to maybe some questions at the end or anyone listening in, I'm hoping and I'm also sure that many of you guys who have been in the water or not have removed at least some trash in their time. And that's the point. We know you guys are doing it. We know everyone cares about marine debris issues. And we want to be there at Project Door to help support this mission by providing methods and tracking opportunities using that dive against debris data to actually show the progress and measure the successful actions that you're already making. So we've taken that data recently and published a full-on scientific um, paper alongside our partners, Ocean Conservancy, and an organization in Europe. So many of you guys would have heard about that. Um, but one thing I really like to, to focus on when it comes to the marine debris side is that you'll see that we've removed um, more than 1.7 million pieces of marine debris. And that really is a huge effort across the global dive community with Jack's Diving Locker participating uh, quite significantly, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But What's amazing is since we started the program in 2011, it's really a testament to the conservation impacts of being a torchbearer, of really making conservation a centric opportunity of every dive, and really showing how that progress has only increased since 2011. Because from 2011 until 2018, we were actually have successfully removed that 1 million pieces, which was a huge milestone for the dive community. But what's even cooler is that from 2018 until now, of course, uh, these new times of ours with the COVID situation being worth mentioning, we've actually removed nearly 1.7 million pieces. So the fact that we're already nearly at that 2 million mark just in, uh, you know, two years or maybe a little bit more than two years is an amazing testament to how conservation is really becoming more 
centerfolds everything that divers are doing, which is exactly why we support everything with Patty's Torchbearer program and really using the 10 tips or mindful actions that we want to do to protect our ocean environment. So that's essentially what we're doing. And we also have created a number of really cool tools and guides for you guys, like a social distancing guide of responsible shark and ray tourism, which we'll, we'll again talk on briefly. So perfect segue into the next slide here. Um, for those who may have seen at the beginning, as uh, we were chatting about with the Jack Stavenlocker staff, we're really excited to kind of bring a little bit more of that conservation value directly from Project Aware alongside Jack Stavenlocker, and this will be tomorrow. So once again, this Project Aware specialty class will be happening at 1 p.m. Hawaiian time. Um, for anyone who's listening in, there is a chance um, to receive a certification, but also a certificate for participating. So if you guys are listening in, you have any family members that you think would really enjoy this program, excellent time to bring them in here because they can receive a, uh, an actual PADI certification, a Project Aware-centric PADI certification for participating and also the opportunity to experience and learn from some of the passionate conservationists at Jack Diving Locker telling you guys about the local conservation efforts alongside Project Aware support. And of course, um, for those who might you know, be able to participate, uh, one of the people here, one of the lucky folks, will, may actually receive a, a free certification, which is a really cool reason to uh, stay all the way through and tune in. And so these are all non-diving specialties and it's a really cool opportunity. So I just wanted to use this perfect example here about being an ecotourist. This is actually taken from one of our 10 tips. We know that things like practicing good buoyancy, as Kyle was saying, right? We want to make sure we don't touch our ocean environment. We want to make sure we're actually being mindful ambassadors because at the end of the day, who else has access to the ocean like we do as ocean enthusiasts and divers? Very few else. And I think Kyle was saying a really cool statistic, which is something that I really want to take to heart about the actual percentage of people who are divers and have access to this world. Something like half a percent or around that mark of the world's population, right? And we think about those kind of numbers, whether it be higher or lower. The main point of this takeaway here is for those who have access, you have to realize the power that you guys have in the choices you're making from a business perspective, from a travel perspective. And you can take solace in the fact that when you're choosing an operator like Jack's Diving Locker, who is taking these steps and offering programs and making conservation at the forefront, everything they're doing, you can know you're making you know, a good-minded business decision and a great opportunity to learn more about what you can do in your ocean environments. So we'll kind of keep on moving here. And so as we were talking about making sustainable choices about being eco-tourists, this is a nice way to introduce exactly what we're talking about when it comes to social distancing. Um, and the Shark and Ray Tourism Guide does a really cool job of taking individual species of animals, sharks and rays specifically, you guys may know about. And for those who may be visiting Hawaii or listening in from elsewhere, you guys might know that they have some amazing programs to interact with manta rays and some other just beautiful ocean creatures. And so when we look at these kind of guides that was created in tandem with a lot of paddy dive centers, along with the World Wildlife Foundation, and of course, Manta Trust. These are organizations that dedicate their entire livelihoods to protecting animals that you might see here in Hawaii and many across the globe. We've actually created a number of standards, um, much like you would have for your open water diver, but for interacting with these sharks and rays. So you can look at this for a moment here and just kind of see what may or may not surprise you. Of course, the things like don't ride the animals, that really stands as a common sense level etiquette. But in terms of the numbers, in terms of how far you might be, and of course, things like you may not realize, but the impacts of your sunscreen choices as well. We know that not just being able to uh, interact with the ocean environments, but protecting yourself is just as important as a, as a human being. And of course, from the health side. And so you may or may not know that there's choices you can make. And I know that Hawaii has really been at the forefront of a long time of being mindful about some of these chemicals in terms of sunscreen, like oxybenzone, which is actually a chemical that is known to be harmful to coral environments. So when you guys are shopping and making those eco business choices like Kyle was introducing earlier, you know, take a look at the back of these bottles and the labels, really see what you're interacting with. I know that Patty Gear and Project Aware, we partner with some organizations like Stream to Sea, for example, um, who does a great job of creating ocean centric and safe alternatives to sunscreen and that are just as effective, but actually uh, nutritious for marine animals. Can you believe it? If things are, you're going for a swim or you're going for a dive or a snorkel. So we just wanna make sure that you guys are staying safe out there but realize that there's, a, there's eco choices you can make just about every aspect of your ocean experience. So we'll keep on going. And here I like to use this uh, photo of a manta that I took here actually uh, alongside Jack's diving locker. And something that I like to share both about in reference 
responsible shark and whale tourism and etiquette is just like we have these amazing moments. And for me, this was actually not only uh, a picture I was able to capture of a manta in Hawaii on the island, but actually one of my first encounters in my entire life uh, with a manta. So you can imagine the general excitement that I possessed. And of course, just the awe and wonder of seeing a, a creature of this just amazing beauty here. And one of the things that I like to remind people, especially in regards to underwater photography, which is something you guys should pursue in terms of better practicing your buoyancy and just really becoming more attuned with aquatic life and how their behavior might look. Because when you have the camera out, you're going to be paying more attention to the behavior of animals and learn more about them as well. But you can see here that I'm behind the animal. I'm not, um, uh, sorry, I'm not hesitating where the animal might be going. So in this case, I'm not in front of the manta, so I'm not blocking any way that it wants to go. I'm behind it, I'm a little bit under it, so it's free to swim all around where it chooses. It may come close to me, but I'm sure not going to be chasing after it. And I was still able to catch an amazing photo from a safe, uh, visible distance, but in a way that respects the animal completely. So a great reference and just one of those moments where we just love to see these animals. My first experience that I wanted to share. So when it comes to things that you guys can do at home, especially right now, uh, I know that maybe some of you guys are going to be lucky enough to dive in Hawaii. Maybe you guys will be diving else in freshwater or other places. But both the Diving Against Debris specialty is an opportunity for you guys to get involved in removing marine debris. And once I was, I was saying, report that data to Project Aware. If you guys want to get involved, the next time you might be taking a course, uh, Diving Against Debris is only a one dive specialty. So it's something that you guys can consider as both an adventure dive in your advanced course or maybe something more that you want to incorporate in just the next recreational dive you participate in. And I like this slide a lot because I actually included some really cool statistics about what Jack's Diving Locker has done specifically in terms of marine debris efforts. And so you can see that they made a tremendous effort in terms of marine debris. And some of those have been quite a large given the amount of surveys submitted. But with Jack's Diving Locker submitting more than nearly 8,000 kilograms of debris, this just goes to show that there's certain areas that need to be uh, protected, certain areas that need to be better understood from a debris perspective. And that's exactly where we will segue into things like the Adopted Dive Site Program, where Jack's Diving Locker has made a commitment to protect not one, but two dive sites. Um, and doing so, they're actually going out to these sites, surveying these, these areas and removing marine debris from them accordingly. And they'll go out about once a month for each one, help us gain a better picture over time, both in the sense of how much debris are they finding in this time of the month, does it attribute to maybe a big event? Like for those listening in, maybe you guys can consider something like July 4th, right? A really big event that would bring a lot of people together. Although in these current circumstances, we'll see how that goes. The, the main idea is that you can imagine that larger events and gatherings will lead to a larger amount of debris. So for those submitting data over the course of a year, like the Adopt a Dive Site program will do, you can get a very clear picture of when the trends of the most debris entering the ocean will be and what exactly you're finding as well from those pieces reported. So just an amazing effort that we can help measure and a really nice opportunity to show that Dive Against Debris can be both an action that you participate in and also something you can take both inside your advanced course next time or just in tandem with some of the programs that Jack's Diving Locker and many others are already doing. Cool. And here's an image that I like to share that kind of brings a little bit of what is marine debris to the perspective. We know that a lot of the issues we face are plastic. We know that underwater, we face more than just plastic, but certain types, including but not limited to fishing gear and much, much more. So I like this picture because it's actually a visual on what and how much type of debris enters the ocean in a specific amount of time. So if you guys want to zoom in a little bit, look around, you'll see that there's little bits of green inside of all around all the plastic that you can see. And this is actually a staged exhibit in Europe for reference. But during this exhibit, it was an opportunity for people to get a visualization of what kind of debris they might be running into in underwater environments. But I think from our perspective, um, for dramatic effect here, there is a certain amount of time it takes for this much debris to enter the ocean. And that amount of time, though it may not be a day, it may not be half a day, it may not even be 15 minutes, but in fact, it actually takes only about 15 seconds for this much debris that you can see here to get into our oceans. So it certainly is something that we want to consider. It's certainly an impact that needs to be done. And what can we do about it? We can do things like we're going to talk about right now. So we go into the next slide. Um, submitting that marine debris data. So we've talked about you guys already removing marine debris, probably something you're aware of. But the easiest way to do this, and it's free, and if you go to Jack's Diving Locker and come to the Project Aware specialty tomorrow, you'll learn more about this as well. But you can go to our website right now at projectaware.org 
end or to the Patty Resource Hub to find more information as well for those who might be uh, involved with those programs and just make a MyOcean profile. If you make a MyOcean profile, we have a platform on our website, um, similar to the way Patty does, called MyOcean. And using this, you can interact with other conservationists around the globe, kind of see the impacts that are being made not only in your local environment, but anywhere. And it's really, really important to note that things like submitting marine debris isn't just something for a professional or a dive center to do. You as a recreational diver, as long as you have access to the ocean and safe diving practices, can participate in this process and make a difference on your dives. Our goal at Project Aware is to give you the confidence and tools uh, free and easy so that you can make every dive a survey dive. And using things like our Diving in Sabri app, which is a free download in the App Store and Google Play, you can use this right now and get started with all of that. So we'll keep on going. So exactly as we were leading into that commitment to submit marine debris data, we were talking about how Jack's Diving Locker has been doing this. They've been doing an amazing job removing just literally tons of debris from our waters. Um, and it's really cool to see how their impact has directly related to the successes of these programs. For example, when we were talking about hitting that 1 million pieces of marine debris, what's amazing is that more than a third of all of that comes from our, our participants like Jack Diving Locker and many others who have actually helped remove more than a third of all of that debris submitted. So just an amazing effort you can trust using our adoptive dive site map or diving a spree map or even our project or action map all available on our my ocean profile so that as you guys are being those eco tourists you can see what dive centers and other organizations are participating in scientific programs like project where it will offer and that way you can choose a better practice for your next vacation so as we move along here um, essentially that is the presentation about ways you can get involved we know that a lot of times right now it's going to be transitioning into diving local or maybe you guys are in Hawaii. I encourage you guys to take a look at our website. I encourage you guys to reach out to myself or Kyle um, if you guys have any questions about how to get more involved with diving programs and conservation. We've learned about some amazing eco practices and opportunities to stay safe during this time, to be able to get back in the water with, um, with some better safe opportunities and of course to bring conservation back into that. Because of course, we've been seeing now that humans have kind of stepped away from the ocean picture at this time, that the ocean always will heal itself. At the end of the day, it's us who needs the ocean and really the ocean who does not need us. And so as, a, as an ocean ambassador, as someone who respects it, as many of you guys are passionate you know, ocean enthusiasts, we wanna be able to come back there with more responsibility, more action and more opportunities to do better and to bring that value of human act, interaction to a positive from here and out. Because everything that you guys do from a small ripple will always lead to a big wave of change. So. Thank you guys so much from my side at Project Aware. Awesome, thank you, Jack. And as well, uh, I, would, I would just like to thank you for attending and watching. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, our contact information's there, but I'd like to throw it back over to Chrissy. And uh, Chrissy, just thank you so much for letting us participate in this. Oh man, yeah. guys, it was really great to have you here with us today. We do have a couple of questions and we do have a giveaway to give, um, uh, to one of our attendees who has been watching all day. First, my first question for you guys is what, for each of you, what is, has been your uh, favorite patty course? Oh, well, I'll start that one off. I would say um, prior to moving to Hawaii, my favorite course to not only teach, but uh, also the favorite course I took was Rec Diver. Um, I really enjoyed that. That's kind of what got me hooked on diving. But as soon as I made it out to Hawaii and, and started diving knee how, um, I would say drift diving became my favorite special, specialty, not only uh, being taught that course, but also teaching that course because it's so, so it's such a valuable skill uh, in the world of diving anywhere. Jack, I think you're muted, Jack. Yeah, I was being respectful there. <laughs> From my perspective, um, some of the most amazing opportunities that we've had to go diving, I think, from my recreational career was Fish ID. Just because as a, as a young age, I was able to get involved with diving, as you guys may have heard from the introduction, and being able to really associate the animals that I was seeing alongside with the diving experiences that I was currently in, just like completely jump-started my passion for the ocean environment. Because once I started to recognize these fish, it'd become almost like a treasure hunt to see where I could find my favorite fish species or start to learn their behaviors because I knew what kind of fish I was looking for in these dives. And there's something to be said about knowing the fish species because more than just knowing what you're seeing, actually, the more that you know about fish species, 
the more fish you get to see, I know it sounds strange, but when you're actually looking for types of fish that you might know, you find so many more you don't. And so it just brings you back to these opportunities to go and pull out these fish ID books, to just want to travel to all these new ocean environments. And fish ID just really gives you this new level of interaction about learning about the ocean environment and its inhabitants in a way that's so engaging that it just keeps compounding. And even to this day, I'm constantly looking to find new fish species on my dive. And it really just brings that passion back every time. Well, you know who has a passion for diving is one of our attendees. Um, Anari. Anari has been asking questions all day to the different speakers and she um, has been diving with us before and she's middle school and we would like to give away a pick, Patty pick to Anari for uh, signing up for uh, potentially the class tomorrow and if she can't make it, maybe a class in the future. So. Oh, that's awesome. Well, yeah, yeah thanks. Congratulations. Thanks for being here all day. Congratulations. Thank you and, so much. And so, Anari, we'll get your info here in just a sec. Uh, there are instructors around the shop who uh, are excited to get you that, um, get you that uh, patty pick. Um, and Anari says, thanks so much. Uh, <laughs> she's very excited. Of course. Yeah. That's great. Of course. Very cool. Um, and so thanks, guys. We really appreciate the support, both from Project Wear and Patty. Um, you guys are both amazing, and we hope that we can dive with both of you again soon.